Welcome back everybody, Unit 5, Careers of the Future. Yes, we're still going to talk about careers, but this time, which ones are popular in the future? And which career is the one you would like to have in the future? We're going to look at three of the questions that our focus is on this topic. Number one, where is the woman in the photo and what is she doing? Okay, this is a lady, what we're referring to, holding a phone, typing something in on a telephone or probably a computer. Well, where can this lady possibly be and what is it that she's doing? Two, what is a career? What is that? What is a job? And how are they different? Career, job, same, different? And three, what career are you interested in for your future. These are some of the things that we are going to talk about. Awesome beans, think about it so in our next class we can have this discussion. Today our focus is gonna be reading one, meet the new boss, you. That's a very interesting um, title. First of, as usual, we start off with our vocabulary. We're gonna read the online advice column from a business newspaper. You're going to pay attention to the boldface words, as usual, trying to figure out the meaning of the words in context, okay? Ask Danny, advice for people wanting to work. We've got absolute freelancer strategies. We go down to sustainable security prospects, outsourced. Um, let's see on the next page. We've got entrepreneurs and experts. Okay, awesome. Now, you're going to read this text. Now, before you do this, I'd like you to apply the reading strategies. Now, the first one that we uh, are going to use, and you know this already because you've learned this last year, you're going to preview. Remember when you preview, you're going to predict the type of text by looking at the title and the visuals. After you've predicted the, ty the type of the text and um, the purpose of that text, you're going to skim, meaning you read the introductory paragraph, topic sentence of each body paragraph, and the concluding paragraph. By doing the skimming, you can already get the main idea of the whole text, right? After that, um, you're going to look over the questions and annotate the questions on the keywords. You can underline them, circle them, highlight them. Then you go back to the text, read the whole text, and then you can answer the questions. I'm going to give you some time to do this. Go ahead. Great. So you're done with your predicting. You're done with your skimming. You've gone over all the questions. And now we're going to look at uh, the questions itself. It says circle the correct synonym for each boldface word. Now, synonym is a word that has a similar or the same meaning, but it's a different word. So it's still the same meaning or similar, but just a different word. I'd like you to answer numbers one until nine. You can pause your video, go ahead. Very good. Okay, we continue with the previewing. Okay, when we preview, as just now, you predict, right? The text type, the genre, and the purpose. Why do we do that? Because we need focus. Remember, it gives us the focus on what to read for. What information are we going to look for? Because there are so many different types of texts. 
Uh, you can refer to that in your ebook, in your ebook for reading and writing at the beginning. You can see that there is a list of text genres and essay genres. Yeah. So basically, in the text just now, um, we there are questions asked to Mr. Denny, and Denny answers that. So it's a question and answering. It's not an interview, but it's an open block probably where we can question and answer. Okay, you're going to read a block, see, about today's news, new careers. Before you read, look at the list of possible topics. Check the four topics that you think you will read about. So we are going to read about a text called Meet the New Boss, You. But before we do that, we preview. So just now, with the text about the vocabulary, we had a chance to practice the previewing and the skimming again, right? Now we're gonna do it again on the text that we're going to read. Um, take some time, check the four topics that you think you will read about. Let me just give you a peek. This is the text. Meet the new boss, you. Let's go through that. It has six paragraphs, okay? Awesome means, go ahead, answer the previewing. You can pause your video now. Okay, now you are going to listen and now before we do that, I want you to skim the text, okay? I'm gonna give you some time to skim the text right now to grasp the main idea of the whole text. Go ahead. Great, so basically you should be able right now to tell me what this text is about. You know what genre it is, what purpose it has, and what uh, the main idea is. Cool, okay, now we're gonna read the text, but you're gonna read it and listen to it at the same time. You can still annotate it, underline, circle, highlight, or maybe you wanna make some margin notes here at the left or the right side while you're listening and reading. Let's go. Meet the new boss, you. People used to be born into a family business or a family career. You'd follow your dad into the sea, the farm or the workshop. You'd follow your mom into the kitchen or sewing room. In your grandparents' time, there was the prospect of working a job from graduation until retirement. How times have changed. Most of my friends have no intention of following in their parents' footsteps or even staying in one job for very long. Working at one particular job for the rest of your life just isn't sustainable. In fact, planning to work in the same field or industry for your entire working life just isn't practical anymore. One reason for this is technology. Skills you learn today will be obsolete very soon. And then what will you do? Work hard? Win the lottery? Hope for the best or pray? You might be lucky. These strategies might bring you a nice, comfy life, working at a job you like and retiring while you're still young and healthy enough to enjoy it. But most of us working today have to look beyond the little box of career. This means thinking of new ways to make our own money and constantly learning to stay on top of this technology we love and hate and use for everything. If you think you can work eight hours a day and build a career, think again. If you think you can't be replaced by software 
or have your job outsourced to the moon, you are wrong. An employer can always replace you or find someone who can do your job more cheaply. One way to protect yourself is to take what you do at the office and do it on your own as a freelancer for a limited time without a contract. For example, if you spend your day editing advertising copy all day, you are developing and getting good at a skill that other people want. Editing is a skill that most companies need some of the time. These companies may not offer full-time employment, but they have 100 hours of work that needs to be done now. You step in, get the job done, and get some extra money. You may even find that you make more money as a freelancer and are able to quit your full-time job before it is outsourced. Another strategy is to find something to do besides what you're doing and keep finding a smarter way to do it. That could be turning a hobby into a small business or using your skills to create products and services that you can sell. In other words, think like an entrepreneur. Find someone who is willing to help you make your idea a reality. You'll need money, organization, workers, and a lot of energy. You'll need to be a risk taker, an innovator, a problem solver, and a hard worker. Being an entrepreneur is not an eight hour a day job. It is a 24 hour a day job. And when things go well, you have your rewards. Here's an example. A woman I grew up with decided to become a chef. Then she developed a wedding cake business. A few years later, she started blogging about desserts and writing restaurant reviews for a website. One thing leads to another, especially if you can become an expert at something. Jobs and careers come and go at an amazing pace these days. What if your job disappears after working for 10 years in the field? You may have to go back to school to be able to work in another field you may have to retrain yourself in order to keep working at the same company or in the same field. In fact, in all likelihood, you will have to do this more than once. In short, if you are going to succeed in the 21st century job market, you have to broaden your idea of what earning a living is. Lifetime security from one employer is no longer certain or even likely. The truth is that you will probably have several jobs in different fields in your lifetime. You may even work as a freelancer or form your own company. Are you ready for this new type of career? Yes, very good. Are you? Are you ready for this type of career? Very different mindset, right? Okay, we're gonna look at the main ideas. So look at again at the preview on page 104. That was here. You picked, you clicked off, you checked off four topics, right? Now, looking at that again, how did your predictions help you understand the block? Did it help or not? It most likely did. Now, in number two, we're going to read the statements. Now, they all give bad career advice. What I want you to do is to rewrite each one to make it reflect one of the main ideas of the reading. I'm gonna give you an example. Number one says, if you find the right job, you can work there for your entire career. 
that's not what the article says, right? The article said, planning to work in the same field or industry for your entire working life just isn't practical anymore. Now we can find that back here in the text. So this is just taken from the text, yeah? So in this case, you don't have to come up with your own sentence, but you just go back to the text to find it and see uh, which one suits the sentence, okay? So you're gonna re rewrite each sentence and you make it reflect uh, the main idea that is stated in the text. I want you to do numbers uh, two, three, four, five, six until seven. You can pause your video, go ahead. Okay, great, that brings us to details. The main ideas just now were only four numbers, but for the details, we had seven numbers. Okay, so just now you had to read the statement and rewrite each statement to make it um, according to what the main idea was in the text. Now we're gonna look at the details that are more precise, more specific. To paraphrase a sentence means to say it in a different way, that you use your own words in a different grammatical structure. Now, the sentences below are paraphrases of sentences in the block. Write the exact sentence from the block that has the same meaning as the paraphrase. So you gotta go through the text, through the block, and find the sentence in the block um, that is the original sentence, which was paraphrased. Yeah, write exact sentence from a block that has the same meaning as the paraphrase and refer to the paragraph in parentheses. For instance, years ago, you could start working in one place and work there all your life. That's paragraph one. But in the text it says, in your grandparents' time, there was the prospect of working a job from graduation until retirement. That's the same thing, has the same meaning. Now, the blue one comes from the text, the black one is paraphrase. Now, I want you to look for the original, sentence um, that is related to this paraphrase okay refer to the paragraphs that are mentioned in the parentheses you're going to do number one until seven i'm gonna give you some time right now to pause your video to do this go ahead okay just now you had to scan the text remember going through the text real fast to find the right uh, sentence and remember the best way to do that is you always have to annotate the the, the sentence um, circle underline, hi underline highlight the keywords and then go back to the text to find but because they use synonyms um, you can't always look for the exact same word but at least for a, a keyword it has the same meaning now we're gonna go over making inferences remember an inference is an educated guess about something that is not directly stated in the text. It's implied, it has an underlying meaning. We, what we do is we combine the facts that aren't stated literally, and from there we can come to a conclusion and that is mostly uh, the educated guess. Writers sometimes use irony in this way. Is the writer being serious or is the writer being sarcastic? Is he or she exaggerating, joking? or even saying the opposite of what he or she means. Now, that is recognizing irony that is stated in an indirect way. Yes, is this idea, is the idea something that you would expect to read or is it surprising? Now we're gonna look at the example and read the explanation. And then what will you do? Work hard, win the lottery, hope for the best or pray? Now, in this text, the author offers suggestions of what to do if your job becomes obsolete. But none of these strategies is realistic. Work hard? Here the author is being sarcastic. You might be very hard worker, but it's hard to work hard when your job is gone, right? Or win the lottery? Here the author is exaggerating because very few people win the lottery. That's a very small chance. Hope for the best or pray? Yeah, here he is being humorous. Everyone knows that getting a new job requires more than just only hoping and praying. These are two good things, but it's not enough. You gotta do something as well. 
after reading the text closely, we can recognize that the author is using irony, so sarcasm, exaggeration, and humor, those three, and we can infer that he is not being serious and wants to surprise the reader. Now, so in this kind of irony, we would need uh, to use inferences to see what the underlying, name, underlying meaning is. Now, in this activity, I want you to check the phrases and sentences from the reading that show irony. Then discuss this together when we meet virtually. You're going to refer to the paragraphs in the parentheses and explain examples of irony. Now there's one done for you, number two. You might be lucky. These strategies might bring you a nice comfy life. That's in paragraph two. Okay, I'm gonna give you some time for this. There are four other checks that you have to place in total with the blue one it's five pause your video to answer this go ahead awesome yeah that brings us to express opinion um choose one of the questions below to discuss it now i'd like you to look at all three or you can pick one that's fine with me and in our next virtual meeting we're going to talk about this now let's just first go over all three yeah one, in your experience, do people no longer follow their parents' career footsteps? Or do they still do that? The question is, would you follow your parents' career? Do the same line of work your parents are doing? Number two, do you agree with the author's idea about freelancing? Would you personally consider being a freelancer in order to find more work? Three, which jobs are more likely or less likely to be outsourced in coming years? Would you know? Would you have an idea on that? Or what do you think and why? Okay, guys, remember when we express our opinion, we use P or peel, yeah? Point explanation, evidence and linking, or also called often in speaking, RL, A for assertion, R for reasoning, E for evidence and l for linking okay it's important that you can reason but um express it with a correct structure yes okay i'm excited because i'd like you to express your opinion in our next virtual meeting uh i'd love to hear what you have to say about this and maybe uh, at home you can practice it a little bit so you can express um more fluent and with the structure of peel okay very good okay that brings us to the end of our lesson today we did a reading one today uh, first off we started with the vocabulary the bold-faced words and we did a practice of the reading strategies previewing and skimming right awesome um, for the vocabulary practice, you had to look for the correct synonym to connect with a bold-faced word. Then we continued with the previewing of the text, the block that we were about to read. From the preview, knowing, um, predicting the text genre and purpose, and therefore getting the right focus, and then skimming the text to get the main idea. After that, uh, we were focusing, we focused on the main ideas by you reading the statements and rewriting each statement to make it reflect the main ideas of the block of the text following that we did the details and um there were paraphrases of each sentence and you had to look for the original sentence that was correlated to the paraphrase in the text itself making inferences we looked at recognizing irony so finding ha, the irony in a text uh, that a writer uses to just give a deeper meaning um, which could be in a way um, that could be just some sarcasm it could be exaggerating something or it could even be a joke just to give an underlining meaning and last you express your opinion by using the structure peel or arel really good this was awesome thank you so much for trying this out we will meet each other again in the next video i hope you stay excited because i am take care god bless you bye bye